、uh, please check it、uh, YouTube を見てほしい。で、多分今開始したからもう始まるんじゃないかな。Okay, we are starting live.、Uh, こんにちは、聞こえておりますでしょうか、えー、ちょっと遅れてしまいましたけれども、こんにちは、聞こえておりますでしょうか、えーえー、ちょっと遅れてしまいましたけれども、こんにちは、聞こえておりますでしょうか、えー、ちょっと遅れてしまいましたけれども、マイクがおかしいみたいですね。えー、遅れてしまいましたけれども、これでどうでしょうか。聞こえておりますか。はい。ちょっとすみません、お時間が経ってしまったんですけれども、えー、これからユーファブ二ゼロ二ゼロの、えー、とファブカフェ、えー、バルセロナとのイベントを開始したいと思います。ちょっとですね、あのバルセロナチームをちょっとご紹介する前にですね。えー、UFAB の UFAB2020 年のちょっと説明を先にさせてください。今、画面共有できてますかしくなってる。
Okay, yes, Kiara. A YouTube no hoga. Just on much good sign. Stand Miss Maro, if I'm here. Oh, yes. Well, David, you want to すみません、少し画面の調子が悪いようで、え、切り替えがうまくいってないのですが、そろそろ画面が切り替わると思うんですけども、何今日してるか。切り替わらないですね。ちょっと人の調子が悪いかな。いけてる映ってます? 多分ここ見なくていい。ユーファブのえ、ちょっとエントリーのご説明だけさせてください。え、このイベントちょっと英語にな、基本的に英語になりますので、えっと、英語のサイトの方を今映しております。ちょっと英語ってここからはえっとユ
and uh, basically people could move freely, could do other things in this, on the street, and cars were not really present. I mean, there were a few people that started to have, you know, the very, very early versions of, of an automobile. Uh, this is the situation last year. Basically, everything has changed. You don't see anymore the, the street cars. I mean, there are a few uh, new, fewer uh, ones right now, very, very uh, limited in some areas of the city. But basically, the cars and um, kind of, you know, polluting vehicles have taken all the streets yeah. and they are the most thing. Uh, that you can see in the city, and you cannot use the streets for anything else except for mobility by mostly private vehicles. Uh, I don't know if you have seen this picture before, but this is something that happened in the US, like, you know, about uh, 80 years ago. These are old streetcars. All the streetcars, in this, in this case, this, uh, this is uh, the streetcars that were in LA, in Los Angeles. And what happened is very, very, uh, very, kind of say, uh, really dramatic and, uh, and, and very uh, controversial. What actually happened is that the largest uh, corporations at that time that were GM, General Motors, Standard Oil, and the Firestone Tire, they bought the transit companies. They, and basically, they just shut them down. And then they created these new contracts that the operators, they were for, uh, only um, allowed to use uh, combustion engine uh, buses or any other kind of transportation for public transit. Uh, at the, in the end, it was demonstrated that they did it at least in 25 cities. And some people believe that it was over 100. So basically, a very, very sustainable form of trans uh, transport that was the streetcar at the beginning of last century was completely dismantled. And, and basically, we moved to private mobility and uh, polluting vehicles everywhere. This is one of the old uh, streetcars in Barcelona. This is, uh, well, right now they're doing some maintenance, but it's still in operation in one line in the basically on, uh, near the, uh, the hill in uh, the top of the city. Uh, it's just right now it's a tourist attraction. Fortunately, we're now having these ones, but only in, we have a very, very few lines. This is the new generation of street cars or trams that we call it right now. And, the, uh, uh, and it's an, a new form of sustainable mobility, but the implementation of these lines have been uh, delayed and postponed over the years. And this is a program that was supposed to be already in operation in many cities, of, in many parts of the city, and is not happening yet. So what can cities do to reverse this situation, the situation of having cars everywhere and, and basically occupying most of the public space? Um, one of the things that car, uh, cities are now trying in many places is creating congestion charge zones or low emission zones. Another tool, very, very important, is parking regulation. Basic, another thing is just to move to electric mobility, especially for, uh, for transit operators, for buses, and enable more bicycle lanes and bicycle highways within the city, like they have done in places like Copenhagen, or Amsterdam, and then reclaim streets for residence use, which is the, the model of the super blocks that we will talk about that later. Barcelona has implemented this year for the first time, what is called the low emission zone in, inside basically the metropolitan area of the city, uh, just inside of the main highways that they go across. Uh, it has taken the, the city more than eight years to actually come to implement the zone after having a lot of different discussions, a lot of pressure from different operators and, and especially from car manufacturers. But right now it is in operation. We don't have any uh, results yet because 
because of the pandemic, the, the final implementation was delayed until last month. A similar zone that has been in operation over, over, for over several years right now is in London, which is called, the, uh, they have the uh, low emission zone, what you can see in green here, and then in the real center of London, they have the ultra low emission zone. Uh, some numbers have come this year and they have demonstrated that in the very really restricted area in the central, the center of London, they have uh, measured a 44 reduction of uh, nitrogen uh, dioxide levels and a very, very important uh, reduction as well in particular matter, which is something that is really important, uh, really bad for, for your health. So this is one tool that really works today. Another tool is uh, demand responsive parking pricing. One of the, the problems in, in many cities is that uh, parking is cheap or free. And this is one of the uh, issues. People basically, they drive their cars in the city, they find a place to park and they pay very, very little or nothing. So one of the, uh, the tools that cities need to implement is something, first of all, completely regulate all parking spaces. Right now, Barcelona is regulating only 55% or even a little bit less of the on-street parking spaces in the city, which is basically, uh, we have around 70,000 places to park in a compact city that are free of charge. That's something that the city has to change in order to reduce the amount of car use in the city. The other thing is charge market clearing price for the locations. Basically, the idea is that you adjust the pricing on demand to, be, uh, to only allow, basically people have to pay um, as much as necessary so there is always one or two spaces free. That uh, helps people coming into the city or going to that area to find, easily find a parking space. They have to pay more, but they are not moving around and driving around trying to find a, a free space for parking, which actually reduces congestion and uh, pollution as well. And the other thing is we have to take all these motorbikes off the sidewalks. This is completely ridiculous. It's actually something like, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a disaster for the city. And uh, on top of that, motorbikes, as they are um, basically motor vehicles, they should park on the street if there is a space for them and pay for it. Another tool would be to implement more electric mobility. Today, electric cars, for example, if you have an electric car in Barcelona, you don't have to pay for parking. You basically you have a reduction or actually you don't pay for tolls on the, on the highways. And uh, so there are certain incentives for moving into electric uh, mobility. But the most important thing is to create more electric mobility for public transport. So actually the, the, the transit authority in Barcelona has made a study about the, not only the impact, but also the cost. And they already determined that the, the total cost of ownership of an electric bus over 10 years, which is usually the time that they have to replace it, is much less than the equivalent of uh, a combustion engine uh, bus, diesel, or even natural gas. That is including the, uh, you know, paying for the charging infrastructure, the electricity and battery replacement. Of course, bicycles. We have to give more space for bikes. This is something that uh, has been demonstrated in Northern European countries over many, many years. And this is something that has to come to us as the best solution for urban mobility especially in, in, in cities like, you know, in the, in the south of Europe, where actually we have very, very nice weather all year round and is a very easy, enjoyable form of transport. And then 
reclaim the streets for people. This is during the, this uh, situation with the pandemic, many cities all over the world, including uh, cities like uh, American cities like New York, and uh, the, this picture that you see on your right is actually in Paris. They have uh, created more open spaces using part of the streets for, for example, cafes and for people to use it, for people to walk, because we have to maintain the social distancing. And uh, one of the things that is basically one of the advantages of this situation that creates the opportunity to change habits and for people to accept new ways of doing things is to open up the streets for pedestrians and for cafes and for other things like, for example, playgrounds and things like that. And this is the idea of the Barcelona Superblocks, which uh, Salvador Rueda is going to talk about in a few minutes. What is the problem? Politicians. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Pablo. So, uh, your mic. Okay. So, uh, now we'll have Salvador Rueda, which is a normal planner and theorist of Hale Barcelona's father of superblocks. Uh, in Japan, you will know him from the Moment magazine, which in, uh, featured him and the concept of superblocks in Japan. So, uh, Salvador, it's all yours. Okay. Thank you very much for this invitation. I try to explain in a few minutes the, the project of Superblocks in Barcelona. Okay, in, in this uh, slide, you can see at left the current situation of the public space in our city, in the city of Barcelona, where the 85% of the public space is related with mo mobility. And above all, uh, in particular, uh, uh, the cars is involved in practically all the uh, streets in our city, like in other cities all over the world. If we want to change this unique use practically in all the city, we need to change the uh, current uh, mobility model. If not, it's not possible to change the current uh, space public model. For this, um, the, the new model for Barcelona approved by the plenary of the, the city council in, in 2015 was the super blocks model uh, included in the uh, mobility plan for this city. Uh, at right, you can see the new proposed uh, where the new network uh, released practically the 70% of the current public space related with mobility. And in these red lines, we integrate all the networks uh, that they want through the city from one point to the other. Uh, then the inside of this, sorry, this, this is a model because it's possible to extend and spread in all the cities over the world. In that case, we have here Barcelona and you can see also all the super blocks are, uh, it's possible to, 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 to have different shapes because we need to have a, 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 super, a, a network that we assure the functionality and the organization of the city. This is, a, uh, is a, one of the main aspects of the model. It's a model because it's possible to extend in, all, in, in other cities. For example, this is the, the case of Madrid or in Vitoria or in Quito or in Buenos Aires, etc. Okay. But normally the car is in all 
the streets in our cities is we identify the streets with the cars. And in that case, we want that the cars only have for circulation, for traffic, the, uh, the red lines in that network. Like when we design a bicycle network, we recognize this uh, network only for bicycles. In that case, this network want to identify the traffic for cars only in that, okay? The rest, the other parts of the city in green, in the right uh, scheme, is liberated and the prioritization is for pedestrians, for movement by foot. This priority is possible to share with other users, but at the end is necessary to recognize by mind that this space is not for cars, is not for traffic, okay? We have this, uh, the streets specialized in red for traffic, in green for other uses, not for movements, okay? In, in, the, in the network of the super blocks, we can integrate all the other networks, in that case for buses or for uh, bicycles, are integrated in the perimeter of the super blocks. And this is the uh, synthesized in, the, in that ma ma map, we can see how the cars, the buses, the bicycles, even the green network is included. And all of them uh, works integrally. This map, we can we can see the 15% of this map is involved in a pedestrian streets, pedestrian areas. And we want to change this sense. We want to change the unique use in practically 85% of our cities. Uh, and the maximum aspiration for the planners is to uh, develop and design uh, pedestrian areas, in that case, the 15% in Barcelona. We want to change this sense because we want to pass from pedestrian, it, it is a mode of transport, to citizen. The citizen is uh, the people with other rights, not only displacement. We want to include in our public space, the entertainment, the exchange, the culture, even the democracy inside, and also the movement above all by foot, okay? And this is the, the final, uh, a space dedicated to pedestrians, but not only for pedestrians, for citizens, is uh, something different. And uh, in that case, we can release practically 6,200,000 uh, square meters released from the current situation. And we can not only develop all the citizen rights, also we can include the uh, new green network in the city. Here, we can, we can see 150 new squares of 2,000 square meters 
news with this other map we will have the most important recyclable urban project over the world without demolish any building it's very important this and it's cheap it's not expensive it's possible to develop this with tactical solutions like this this is one of the new squares uh, previously it was an intersection traffic intersection 2000 square meters for citizens is not cheap in barcelona it will be possible to extend this idea only for three three uh, 300 millions of euros is nothing. Appear also this new green network. The main green corridors are uh, exposed in that map and also the secondary uh, green uh, corridors is possible to implement because, for example, in that case, this uh, this new uh, green corridor go from to the Besor River to the beach and cross five five uh, parks, urban parks, for example, this and this is the Central Park in Poblenou, or the Park del Nord, or Ciutadella Park, or Catalana Park. Five, five kilometers length of this new green corridor, because it's possible, because we have the space released inside of the circle blocks. You can see, in that uh, scheme, how is possible to implement a new green network inside of that city? This is possible after that. With the superblock model, uh, the it implementation could avoid about 667 uh, prematurism uh, death for different reasons. Uh, in that case, when we can reduce the pollution, air pollution in our city, after this implementation of 500 superblocks in Barcelona, we can reduce practically 300 people that uh, uh, we can avoid the premature uh, death or for noise or for temperature or for the existence of the green areas or uh, physical activities after the implementation of the super blocks in our city. And also another objective of this new urban mobility plan based in superblocks is to uh, get the number of uh, vehicles uh, in circulation less in our cities to uh, get the good emissions uh, of dioxide of carbon to make that the, the agreements of the city about how is the quantity of greenhouses uh, gases we need to reduce in our cities. In that case is the example of Victoria Gasteiz. We need to reduce 26% of cars and we get at the end the emissions of oxygen, uh, sorry, uh, di dioxide, uh, the, the, the green ga uh, gases houses, 
uh, to uh, to get the objective in that in that variable. Uh, I need to say for finish my presentation that we can release the 70% of the public space and the quantity of uh, cars that we need to reduce in circulation is only 15%. It's quite magical. It's possible to develop in all the cities without problems. Then is only uh, finishing with the same uh, slide of Pablo uh, shown previously, the problem is the politics. Without that, thank you. Well, th thank you very much, Salvador. So they are feeding me questions through different channels. So I'll let, just say the question, and whoever of you wants to answer first, uh, be free to to have the initiative to to do so. So first question is. Uh, according to residents, what benefits did they realize now, finally, after Superblock was implemented? Um, the, the main uh, improvements in the Superblocks for the citizens is, is more safety, is accessible for everybody. The, the comfort the noise, the air quality, the new uses, the, the quiet space, the landscape, all of this improve. Also improve the number of new ec uh, economic activities. Okay. And at the end, the most important is that they, they have connected with the city like the uh, uh, a scenario that they have before. They can access to the city without problem. The new bus network uh, increase the number of people connected with a, 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 a stop in a public, uh, public uh, transport uh, stop is less of 300 meters for everybody. Practically the 99% uh, of people is connected with a uh, frequency of pass uh, near to five minutes in all the city. Then is in a equity, equity network and the service is similar in the periphery and the center, etc. This is uh, uh, several uh, aspects that the, the, the people could uh, uh, life inside of the, in, in the super blocks. Great. Uh, any, anything to add, uh, Pablo? Well, thank you. Uh, I think uh, one of the uh, I've seen the the implementation of the super blocks here, and uh, if we look at the not the newest ones, but the one that, for example, was made uh, was implemented in Gracia over ten years ago. I think most people in Gracia uh, this moment they are really really happy with it because it gives them a lot of more space for all these different activities. It has reduced the amount of traffic, pollution, noise, and uh, all, these, all these problems in the neighborhood. And uh, while initially, and I had some conversations with Salvador over the past few years, there was initially a big resistance. They had to do hundreds of meetings with residents and, and with uh, uh, businesses in the area. And while initially there was a lot of resistance for the implementation of the program, uh, right now everybody or most people are really, really happy with that. They lost some parking spaces, the mobility has changed completely, but it has been a blessing for the neighborhood. 
And I think if that happens in other places in the city, finally people will realize that it's a very, very good idea. The only thing is like, uh, and I remember one politician in the Barcelona uh, City Council uh, told me um, a few years ago is that the, any mobility uh, changes, they have to do it at the beginning of every term because there's going to be a fight. They cannot try to do it at the end. And politicians, they, they want to win elections. So that is usually the problem. <laughs> Great. Uh, I remind the audience that they can ask questions in the, in the YouTube comment uh, channel. I will read them from there. Like Rio Gababa, who asks, uh, when you say local economic activities has gained, what specific kind of businesses are there? So what kind of uh, business are the ones that are uh, gaining, uh, economically speaking, from these changes? Yes. In I all just... the super blocks implemented in Barcelona, at least the 15% of new activities are uh, uh, implemented in the super blocks. 15% is the, the minimum. In uh, some cases, we have um uh, 60% uh, new uh, economic activities what kind of activities uh, a part of these activities are related with the residents and others because the urban quality increase a lot arrive because uh, they want to uh, stay in places in surface in in fabrics uh, urban fabrics with a uh, high quality and then uh, is a possibility uh, to to have a place to work very nice okay without noise with uh, uh, without practically air pollution with a uh, with a uh, a new uh, green surface inside of the super block is like a garden in several aspects, okay? Then uh, the new activities are very, very diverse. It's not only for resident, residents, but also. Well, I just want to add that uh, it has been demonstrated that uh, when in a city there is a street that is close to traffic, and becomes pedestrian. There is a huge increase in, especially food traffic, which really, that's the general idea, but all businesses and most of the business in the area, they get a much higher return. They, uh, they get more customers. People are actually finding businesses that they did not look at them before because they were driving their cars. So they were just going to one place and they missed the rest of the, uh, the retail space or the coffee shops or the, uh, the other, you know, the small shops in the neighborhoods. So everybody, uh, everybody knows today, and there has been several studies and demonstrations all over the world that when a city, when a city closes one street uh, for, uh, for traffic and only, only get, it gets pedestrian, uh, there is an increase in business uh, for everybody in that, on that street. So, I think uh, there is no argument against that part. Yeah. Uh, another another uh, question, another um, idea uh, about the the super block. The super block is like a little village, very quiet. The we can become the streets in squares with different uses, kids, children playing in the middle of the street without problem, because the speed, uh, maximum speed is 10 kilometers per hour. And this allows us to include all the citizen rights and interests inside by safely. Everybody can use 
the public space, not the cars only. Great. Um, Chiaki asks, I'm sure you're doing uh, projects at the request of various cities around the world. What was the most difficult case of applying biological and ecological theory to urban development? So what was the most difficult case that you've had of doing this uh, development? City or the, the model? Uh, well, which model maybe was the most difficult case that you had to maybe apply? For me, the best is the superblock. I develop the superblock not only like a model and base of the mobility and public space model. It's the base, but not only. The next uh, week, I will give a lecture about the super block like a base of the new urbanism. An urbanism that I propose name it ecosystemic urbanism. And then this new urbanism want to, uh, to fight against the current impacts in particular the climate emergency, okay? And want to reduce the temperature inside of the city. With the superblock model, we can make green the city, not only in the surface, even in the, in the covers, even in the green roof, okay? And we want to develop a, a, a new a green carpet for the city and it's possible after that to reduce three or four degrees inside of the city. In our case, in the Mediterranean area, uh, the temperature can uh, have a difference between the periphery seven or eight degrees and we need to reduce this, this uh, heat island effect. And the Superwax project model uh, can uh, help us how we can reduce uh, the temperature, for example. Uh, great, it's two o'clock, but I want to finish with an, an, one last question. Uh, so for example, uh, Judith Bataille just wrote, um, I love San Antonio, however, I was in the presentation of SB at 22, arroba 22, just before it was deployed. Hotels were against this project, as a tourist can seem uh, to arrive easily to them. How did you solve it with them? I don't know if you are, uh, under, uh, if I explain. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, uh, let me go it again. So um, uh, I love San Antonio. However, I was in the presentation of the SB Arroba 22 just before it was deploy uh, de deployed, but the hotels were against the project because they said that hotels said that the tourists could not arrive easily to them. Uh, how was this solved? Uh, it's, it's not true. <laughs> Every Everybody can arrive because the the super block in 20, in 22 at uh, in all the super blocks is possible to go in and to connect with all the facades inside of the super block uh, but you can arrive by car even by car by taxi but uh, these loops uh, when you uh, go into the super block in a street, and a loop make that you go out of the super block in the same street, but it's possible to connect with all the facades, and then they can arrive at the hotels, at uh, at uh, uh, business, or uh, that every everyone. Uh, they want. At the end, it's flexible, the model. 
it's possible to arrive at all the points inside of the city, okay? And even several taxis, it's possible to see inside of the super blocks, go around of these sloops because the tourists want to see the super block and, and they are changing in different sloops because they want to stay in the taxis at the same time to uh, visit the super block. <laughs> Great. Um, this last question is for both of you. Um, I don't know if you've uh, been to Japan, uh, but uh, coming into mind how everything is shaped, uh, compacted together, uh, how, what were your thoughts on this and what's maybe, what input may you have for them for maybe how they, um, how they do that urban planning, for example, in Tokyo or other cities in Japan? Well, I think initially uh, I will let Salvador answer that question because I am not an urban planner. I'm basically just trying to understand how uh, some cities work and to report on that. Uh, but I think the, the, the situation with uh, many cities, and especially I uh, think in Asia, is that they, they moved into a model of uh, high rises. So there is a very, very high density in the center of the cities. And this is something that creates uh, unique uh, problems, but at the same time, it creates unique opportunities. Uh, for my point, in my point of view, it's just, you know, you have to redefine the way of mobility, uh, invest more in public transport, because that's the only way to move those millions of, pe of people uh, every day. You cannot do it on private vehicles and not even autonomous cars, because that's not a solution. Uh, and, uh, and, and basically uh, reclaim some of the public space. But I think Salvador will have more ideas about that. Okay. I think this, uh, the current uh, discussion about uh, the density of the cities is a very interesting uh, subject. But I think the, the current health emergency will be a play of kids related with the climate emergency. The climate emergency want to have the proximity, have dense and compact cities. And with the super block model, we can share this objective with the density of the city because the superblock model release the 70% of the public space in Tokyo, in Barcelona, or in New York. And then the, the security and the safe space for citizens in the public space is possible to, um, to, to get. And then, uh, for me, this discussion doesn't exist if we implement a solution like the superblock model, because both objective, the climate emergency and the health emergency is possible to get the objective to reduce the impact of both. Well, thank you both for being here in this uh, in this seminar with us. It's been a real honor to have you both. Uh, for all of you that want to um, participate on the UFAP contest, uh, feel free to contact any of the FAC cafes, either if one is in your country or otherwise, and we'll attend you through that channel. Well, thank you very much, and thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.